All right, time to go teach. Hello and welcome to this next episode of Tutor Tutors where we are continuing in genetics and we are going to be looking at co-dominance and incomplete dominance. You see, in the past episodes, we were looking at complete dominance, where you could have one allele either completely dominant or completely recessive to the other allele. One allele could mask the other allele. But that's not always the way that alleles interact. So we're going to look at two different ways that alleles can interact with each other. So targets of the day, to be able to solve genetic crosses involving co-dominant and incompletely dominant alleles. That's our goal. That's, that's it. What we were looking at before was called complete dominance, where if you happen to have two different alleles and our organism was homozygous dominant, it would appear red. And if it happened to be a heterozygous, it would also appear red. And only if it was homozygous recessive would you end up with a white flower. The only way that the recessive allele would be expressed is if the organism was homozygous for the recessive trait. And then it would have the recessive phenotype. But sometimes we have what's called codominance. And that's where instead of actually having one allele mask another allele, both alleles are going to be expressed, but the expression of them is going to be equal, but not overlapping. They're not going to mix or blend together. You're going to have both traits equally. So if we had a red allele and a blue allele, then the heterozygote would appear as both being blue and red. The petals of our flower would show both phenotypes equally. And a phenotypically red flower would have the genotype of the red alleles, and a phenotypic blue flower would have blue alleles. But that's not all that could be, because we don't just have to have only two different alleles. We could have a third allele that interacts a little bit differently. So it's not like a gene only is going to have two alleles. A gene can have many alleles. And we could have another allele here, so we're going to have a, add a white allele. And this white allele is going to be completely recessive to both the blue and the red alleles. Going back from our previous example where we showed the complete dominance, where the only way you had a white flower was if it was homozygous for white. If the white allele is recessive to red, then our red flower it doesn't just have to be homozygous for red, it could actually also be heterozygous for the red and the white. And likewise, the blue could also be completely dominant to the white, and that means that it could end up having a heterozygote also appearing blue, where it have the blue allele and the white allele, and only the blue allele is being expressed because the blue allele is completely dominant to the white allele. So in this example, we have two different ways that these alleles can interact. The white allele is interacting with the red and the blue where they are showing complete dominance to the white allele. They mask the white allele completely. That is complete dominance. But the interaction between the red and the blue is codominance, where both alleles are being expressed phenotypically, but not mixing together in any way. They're both showing their true colors. Blue and red is being shown. That is codominance. Incomplete dominance is another way that alleles could interact. And incomplete dominance is where, instead of not having a blending of the two different phenotypes like in codominance, incomplete dominance does have a blending of the two different phenotypes. So the two different phenotypes will blend together. This would be like curly hair and straight hair, and the intermediate would be wavy hair. That is incomplete dominance. To show incomplete dominance, we're going to use our alleles for red and our alleles for yellow. So, yellow would have to be homozygous for having the yellow allele. A red flower is 
homozygous for having the red allele. And the combination, a heterozygote, would appear orange, where we have both the red allele and the yellow allele mixing together to produce an orange color. That's just one way that incomplete dominance could work. So if we were to take a field and we were to look at our P generation, where we had a white flower and we had a red flower, and we were to cross these and we would then have these as being true breeding flowers, so they're homozygous for their specific trait. If we were to cross these and we would get our F1 generation, we would have only one option as our offspring. We would have the only option would be red flowers and our red flowers would be heterozygotes. That's the only option that we would have for our F1 generation because of doing the cross of a homozygous dominant to a homozygous recessive. You're always going to end up with heterozygous as your offspring. Now, if we took this F1 generation and we crossed it, we would see that we would follow the exact ratios that we would expect, which would be three out of four times we would anticipate we would have a red flower and one out of four times we would anticipate a white flower. We would expect only 25% of them would be homozygous for the dominant allele and 50% of them would be heterozygous and 25% of them would be homozygous for the recessive allele. That would be what we would anticipate. If we were to change this up a little bit, and we were to look at it, and now we're going to take, instead of just the red and the white flower, we're going to take the red and the blue flower. And in this case, we're going to have them being homozygous, still true breeding for their specific traits. So if we were to take these and we were to cross them, we would end up with a red and blue flower. 100% of the time, we would always get a red and blue flower because we would always get a heterozygous. And if we cross now these two heterozygotes, with each other, we would get our F2 generation where we would anticipate that of our F2 generation, 25% of them would appear red, 50% of them would appear to be blue and red, and only 25% of them would appear to be just blue. And we would know, we would be able to identify from the way that these different flowers look what their genotype is. We could say that these red flowers would have to be homozygous for the red allele. Blue and red flowers would have to be heterozygous, and the blue flowers would have to be homozygous for the blue allele. A red flower and a yellow flower, and we were to cross those, we could just follow right along, and we'd know exactly what the F1 generation would be, we had took our homozygous individuals, we crossed them, we are going to end up with a heterozygote. That would be our orange flowers. And if we were to take our orange flowers and we were to cross them, we would end up with our F2 generation where we would see a very similar frequency as what we just had, which would be that 25% we would anticipate would appear red, 50% we would anticipate would appear orange, and 25% we would anticipate to be yellow. And just like the last time, we know based upon the different phenotypes what the genotypes of each of these offspring would be. We know that the red would be homozygous for red, the orange or heterozygous, and the yellow would be homozygous for yellow. And this doesn't just work in flowers. This works in a lot of different organisms. So we could also do this with cows. We can have black and brown. Those are co-dominant to each other. And they, when they end up having a heterozygote, that will appear as spots of black and brown. And red and white cows, those are going to also be co-dominant to each other. But instead of having spots, they are going to appear what we call roan. Roan is a really interesting phenotype. And the other thing that we know is that the black alleles and the brown alleles are completely dominant to the white and the red alleles. So white and red are completely recessive to the black and the brown. So let's look at some examples using our cows. First, we look at our parental generation where we are going to take a black and a brown cow. And we're going to make these cows true breeding again to, so that way we know that they are homozygous for their specific alleles. When we cross these, just like in the flowers, we are going to end up with our heterozygote. 
we are going to end up with a black and brown spotted cow. And so now we have the brown and the black spotted where the, both of those phenotypes are showing up, not blending together. And it doesn't matter, you know, which way it sort of looks. It's just there's going to be an equal amount of black and brown showing up. So we have our two black and brown cows that we are now going to mate. And we cross them, we get to our F2 generation. And in our F2 generation, we are going to see that we were going to end up with 25% would be black, 50% we anticipate would be black and brown, and 25% we would anticipate would be brown. And we know what the genotype would be based upon what the phenotype is. That shows up in each of these cases. If we were to take two different cows, we're going to take a red cow and we're going to cross it with a black and a brown cow now. Now, some very interesting things will happen. First off, we know that our red cow is going to be pure breeding, so it's going to be homozygous, and we know our black and brown cow must have both a black and a brown allele. It must be heterozygous. And so if we cross this, what we'll see is that we have two options for our offspring. Our offspring, we anticipate we get a 50-50 split of brown cows and black cows. Each of their cows would be heterozygous, but heterozygous with the brown allele and the red allele, and heterozygous with the black allele and the red allele. If we were to take our F2 generation, one of our brown cows and one of our black cows, and cross them together, what we would anticipate coming out would be that we would have about a 25% chance that we could end up with a black and brown cow, a brown cow, a black cow, or a red cow. Those are our different phenotypic options based upon the genotypes that we could also end up with, where it could be heterozygote for the black and the brown allele, it could be heterozygote for the brown and the red allele, heterozygous for the black and the red allele, or homozygous for the red allele. And lastly, we're going to also just look at if we took a red cow, and a white cow, and if each of these cows are homozygous for these different genes, and then we cross them, we would end up with only one option, which would be not pink. No, that would be if it was incomplete dominance, and this is co-dominance, so it would look roan, and that would be our heterozygote cow that has both the red and the white alleles. The key here is that it's different hair colors that are very close together. It will have both the red hairs and the white hairs very close, so even though it's not spotted, it is both traits being expressed equally. And if we cross our roan cow, we would end up in our F2 generation, getting these expected phenotypic ratios, where we would anticipate 25% would be red, 50% would be roan, and 25% would be white. That would be 25% homozygous for the red allele, 50% would be heterozygous for the red and the white, and 25% would be homozygous for the white allele. Those are our expected genotypic frequencies. So in summary of all of this, alleles do not only come in just a dominant and recessive variety. There are different ways that these alleles can interact. They can interact in a co-dominant or an incomplete dominant interaction. Those interactions are going to be slightly different, where a co-dominant, both traits are going to be expressed equally, or incomplete dominance, where the final phenotype is a mixture or an intermediate of both of the phenotypes for those different alleles. And sometimes that means that the phenotype of our individual can reveal what the genotype is. And those inheritance patterns follow the exact same trends, no matter if it is with complete dominance, incomplete dominance, or with co-dominance. And lastly, that also means that our offspring has now, instead of just having two options for a phenotype, now we have even more variety for our offspring. And that is co-dominance and incomplete dominance. Until next time, be awesome, stay awesome.